What up, YouTube? Hi, everyone. Right, time to get off on my face. So, we've already filmed this video. We're having to refilm it because the last one we just ended up talking for 20 minutes. We got interrupted five times. And yeah, we had to sign for a few parcels. Yeah. <laughs> so, we just wanted to do a. We wanted to do a quick video, but every time we try to do a quick video, it's ended up being 20 minutes. And so. this is probably going to end up being 20 minutes again now. <laughs> So yeah, so we did um, an Instagram post a couple of days ago about what's next for us. Um, so obviously Dan recently competed in his possibly last bodybuilding show. Yeah, there's no plans for me to compete in uh, any time in the near future. Right now, I can't see myself competing again, but like I said, never say never. Um, but yeah, I have no intention of competing again. My focus has somewhat shifted and that's kind of what this, what this video is about to be honest. So. Yeah, so uh, I'm the same. I competed for two years. I've done a lot of shows in two years. Um, and I'm not saying that I'll never ever compete again. I don't say never say ever. But really right now, it's not in my... Um, not in my, my view. We've both got competitive backgrounds and we think it's taught us a lot. It's probably uh, helped us establish a name and uh, our careers and brands somewhat in the fitness industry. But we feel like the message that we want to get out there, the... You can't grow if you carry on doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I suppose. But like the message that we want to put out there and the thing that we felt passionate about wasn't so much as comp prep. It was more people and people's health and fitness. And people creating a healthy lifestyle that's yes. achievable, sustainable and realistic. And that was always my goal when I saw BB Fit. I mean, obviously when me and Dan met, like I already had plans um, for BB Fit. And when I look back at my original plans, it was always to help women find, that, find their healthiest version of their life, making fitness fit their life. Um, not making it obsessive, uh, establishing a healthy relationship with food and with their self-image and um, being self-loving. Um, I don't think uh, competing essentially um, embodies that somewhat. I think personally my transition just come from my experience in my last prep. I feel that I sacrificed too much. Uh, I sacrificed too much. And a big turning point for me was when I posted a picture on Instagram where I was shredded and I got a lot of feedback, whether it be comments or private messages and um, even clients looking to sign up with me saying how I was uh, a figure of inspiration and I look sick and all these other things. But what you guys didn't see were like me on a day to day basis. You didn't see me dragging my feet like up the stairs at my gym because I was so fatigued. You didn't see me having to have three naps a day. You didn't see me struggling to hold a conversation with people paying clients in one-to-one -one sessions and not being able to provide a service. And you didn't see how much it affected mine and Dom's relationship. Um, obviously, I we're did. strong <laughs> and our relationship's strong. Um, we have ups and downs just like anybody else, but that definitely did test us. Coming off the back of it and uh, like seeing that what that picture did, it was just something that I didn't want people to aspire to be. Um, I feel that competitors make too many sacrifices and all those sacrifices do need to be made. I think people put too much pressure on themselves, too much stress on their relationships, on their work, on their business, on their friendships. And I don't want other people going through that process. Uh, process. Yeah. I want people and I don't think you want to put a message out there that you have to compete to sort of prove that yeah. you're fit and healthy. And that's been, um, that's something that somebody said to me a, a good while ago. And at the time, I got it. But now I really get it. Um, like you don't have to compete to prove that you're fit and healthy. You don't have to compete to look good. You don't have to compete to get leaner. Um, and I think it's something that is maybe forced onto people. Um, and it's not necessarily for everyone. And it, well, it really isn't for everyone. Um, but I think there's a little bit of a hype now where everybody thinks they have to do it at some point. Um, and don't get me wrong, like we've said, it, it's it like has It's like every success story has to be rewarded by somebody stepping on stage when it really doesn't. Yeah. 
you can and, 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 and this is kind of a message say. that we're trying to get across now that we not get across but this is a message that we're going back to um, and working with a lot of day-to-day -day people who just want to feel healthy who just want to be fit who just want to drop weight and feel good in themselves and feel confident and they don't have to step on stage, they don't have to judge their self-worth based on how many trophies or how many abdominals they've got. So yeah. that's kind of where our focus is shifting now and the part, part that we want you guys to be a part of is obviously our YouTube channel and where the, the transition that we're making is, like I said, we both come off competitive backgrounds so we both come off the back of bodybuilding kind of split and now we're both kind of going it's into like always a, been aesthetic yeah yeah right? aesthetic club, isn't it? and this is like a good, that's a good point that like Dom just mentioned because now we're both tra like making a transition into I'm not going to say just CrossFit but predominantly CrossFit but we're just more functional yeah and me especially I'm struggling like I'm I've done three sessions now of CrossFit fitness is poor and this is another thing that I just spoke to Dom about as well I spoke to my IG People look at me right now and see my body fat being so low and they think, oh my god, this guy's a beast. But literally, I'm finishing the last in every class. I might be lifting the most weight, but I'm finishing last in everything. So overall, I'm actually the weakest. But you'd look at me and think I was the strongest. And that's, again, another thing that I don't want to put out there. Um, yeah. So this is what I said as well. Like, there's only so much fulfillment you're ever going to get out of training for aesthetics. Because yeah. realistically, your body can only look so good, especially like Dan said, but what, how he looks right now is not sustainable. So he's only going to get satisfaction out of that for a brief amount of time and the satisfaction is purely visual, whereas internally and um, as a person he feels weak, he's tired, he's moody, he's low, his energy level is low, so he might look great, do you feel great? No. no. So what we wanted, wanted to, to do was combine the two, we want to look good and feel good at the same time. So, but aesthetics being a byproduct of how well and how well we perform. And yeah, I mean, I've always trained for aesthetics, and it's somewhat self-obsessive. And I said it to somebody the other day, like, how much fulfillment are you going to get out of having bigger shoulders and bigger glutes? Because your glutes and shoulders are only going to get so big, yeah. and that, like anything, it gets kind of boring. The appeal wears off after so long. So. Whereas with something where it's performance based, where you're pushing yourself and you're getting out of your comfort zone time after time after time after time, you're constantly progressing, you're constantly growing, you're constantly improving, there's always something that you can be better at. Um, and again, you can do that with your aesthetics, but generally when you train for aesthetics, nothing's ever going to be good enough. So that's why we wanted to focus on making it more of a byproduct of what we're actually doing and just working hard instead of being the sole focus of our training. Not just that as well though, but we also wanted to show people how we're going to do it. So hopefully you guys can take something away from this. And a big thing for me that I said was, not everybody wants to walk on a treadmill for cardio for example. So like me and Dom want to start some boxing. Dom wants to start uh, Muay Thai personally. I just want to do boxing. Um, I just and, want to do everything. And that's cardio. Some people might want to do running for cardio. Some people might want to do boxing, um, Pilates, yoga, they might want to walk the dogs. Each and every one of you guys watching this now has a different passion and we all enjoy different things and that's something that DB Fit and Discipline and something else that we've got coming out together is going to be all about. It's, it's, it's about you and yes, it's achieving about training results. For your soul. <laughs> yeah, it's about achieving sustainable results that doesn't require the sacrifices that I made this year and the detriment that I caused to everything around me. Yeah. So that, that that's that's my own personal opinion. So yeah. So we'll always keep an video, element of bodybuilding training in there, yeah. and strength is always going to be the foundation of any training. Um, so CrossFit we'll, bodybuilding. Yeah. Like, which is I I it's don't think functional. I've ever pressed as much over the past three days. Like it's literally been like push day and, and leg day for three <laughs> days in a row. That's probably why I'm feeling beat. But imagine doing that with burpees and box jumps and everything in between as well. I'm used to sitting on my phone and texting for two minutes and then going in for a little set of eight. These yeah. guys have got me doing 10 reps with 100 <laughs> kilo overhead pressing to box jumps and then skipping and then eight reps and then it, this stuff's brutal but it's so enjoyable and I think something else that me and Dom enjoyed as well was the team atmosphere and aspect of it. Bodybuilding is quite a selfish and lonely sport and since we've been coaching out of train like 
the guys around you want to see you succeed. They're, they're like supporting you. Like when I was finishing, I had guys who had never even met me coming to me, egging me on to finish, like supporting me and things. And I, and I miss that environment. I like that. Yeah. And yeah, I, can, so I, think I think that's why females might like possible as well, you know. Yeah, it's just it's just something that's new for us. I'm always I'm a massive advocate of getting out of your comfort zone. I mean, always, always banging out about on social media. Um, and I feel like I can't preach about that if I'm sat in my comfort zone. Yeah. Like I can leg press 400 kilos, like that's no problem. But doing a snatch, doing a clean and jerk, doing a clean and press, like that's a whole other story. And I thought I'd be good at stuff like that. Yeah. Till I fell on my ass five times in a weightlifting class. So yeah. So it's just about trying new things, growing in different disciplines, learning new things that are only going to help us as coaches, as trainers, and as individuals, um, and just helping us to progress. Um, so I mean, I think that's training covered. But Definitely. I mean, we were. We've, I've spoken to a few people as well, so hopefully we can get a few more people on this channel that we're going to look to collaborate with. People who are more experienced than us in CrossFit. People that can kick our ass, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And other disciplines that we want to get on and be put through our pace as well. It's, all, it's not always that it shouldn't always be about me and Dom putting our clients through it. We, we want to go through it as well so you guys can see. Yeah. And yeah, and hopefully, like, like I said, you can take something away from it. Yeah, and hopefully, we might inspire you to try something new. Exactly. Even that's, that's, that's the main thing. So, we're going to be sharing as much as we can of this um, on, on here, so you can have a look. You can laugh at our expense. Um, probably see my sweaty face and Dan's. <laughs> Dan's um, breathing like a rhinoceros. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So I think that's training good, but in terms of what's next for us in life, because <laughs> one of the main reasons we wanted to change about training again was we just want to enjoy life a little bit more. Yeah. Obviously with Dan being a little bit restricted for the last 10 to 12 weeks, it has made him realize and me that there is a lot more to life and <laughs> how much we've missed out on just in that small amount of time and how many opportunities there really are. So. We both want to see the world, we both want to travel, um, and we both want to experience different cultures. So we're going to be doing a little bit more traveling, and well, a lot more traveling. We're going to show you how to stay fit while you're traveling, and eat well, um, and how to just enjoy your life, stay fit and healthy, uh, which anyone can do. Um, I, think, I think something for me is, I've pretty much had three years where I've eaten out of a Tupperware, I've done the whole bro bodybuilding, well. chicken and rice here kind of thing. And I'm recording this video a week after my show and I'm only three pounds under my stage weight and I've been more flexible this week and been less stressed and had less pressure on myself and I find myself progressing even more right now. Uh, I am a lot flat, complete and tired but that's just because I'm taking calories. Because he's cal all show and he's not messing it up. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah, most, yeah, and because I'm taking calories a little slower than what I'd like, simply because we've got a lot of films and photo shoots and whatnot for our content coming out soon. So in short, but, Daniel Lou needs to practice what he preaches, and so do I, because I felt like I've been hit by a bush yesterday. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that kind of relates onto the next thing, which is nutrition, which is... Going from a bro kind of bodybuilding, I'll still wear foods and things, but I want to show, I, like I said, don't we sacrifice a lot. I want to live life a little bit more. I don't always want to lay foods out. I'll just simply track it's food. It's not possible all the time either. Intuitively and... and Eat what? We're, we're just going to balance his life, so we're going to show you how we do it. And again, <laughs> just like the training, we're I just love Dan's pronunciation of intuitively. <laughs> I have no idea how to say that. that that's why. It's like my intelligence is that high in every other aspect of life, I can't say specific words. <laughs> no, he's just got a list and he can't speak properly yeah. at all. <laughs> it's that Sheffield accent, it's nothing to do with that. <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to show you how we eat out, we're going to show you what food choices we make, why we make them. Uh, we're not saying that you guys should do this and follow this, but... There might not even be any science behind it, because I just like a steak and a good glass of red wine, so... Yeah, and hundreds of... Some, some, <laughs> the some, science behind that is life. We've <laughs> literally just been talking about calories don't count on a Sunday, and that's because we're doing two CrossFit classes on a Sunday, plus yoga. And we were just like, you know what, Sunday we're going to take the evening off, we're going to go out, we're going to do what we want, probably going to go to the cinema, have some ice cream, and we're probably just going to have a meal out, and we won't take calories into consideration one bit, and then Monday when we get back to it, we'll track calories, we'll track macros a little bit better, simple as yeah. that. 
Yeah. We're not um, going to constantly stress ourselves out on the on, a, on the fact that oh, we put two pound on a scale weight because we didn't like no. Yeah. We're so gonna, in terms of life. nutrition, we're basically going to make ourselves a little bit of a science experiment and document it on here yeah. for you to watch. So we're going to do a flexible dieting week and how you can track your macros and things like that. So we're going to have that uh, probably next week. Uh, yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. And what else? Business. So, <laughs> we're not going to go into detail, but we have decided to collaborate somewhat on a few things. Obviously, YouTube channel being one, I have my own YouTube channel, Dan has his own YouTube channel, and essentially two brains, two personalities are better than one. So, we decided to come together on this and maybe a few more exciting projects. Yeah, so if you're watching this as well, um, yes, we are doing our first joint team meet. So as part of the Wheel of Manchester, um, obviously what happened in Manchester a few weeks ago now, we've decided to hold our first event in Manchester, obviously it's a city that we both love, and it's going to be based in Media City, Manchester, at the Train T2 Media City branch. and. We're going to post someday as to how you can get involved and come to mine and Dom's team meet. We're going to be doing Q and A's. We're going to be workouts. Uh, I'm not going to say seminar, but it's going to be like a workshop, and we're going to talk about specific topics, whether it be weight loss, goal setting, comp prep, whatever it may be, training, nutrition, everything. So um, it's going to be held. Is it eleven world two? Check out the post on Sunday. And we'll, uh, <laughs> So basically, we've not decided on the time, but Dan just randomly yeah. made that up and tried to pretend that we'd discussed no, this. No, I posted that in my group, really. I can't remember if it was 10 to We'll say 11 three. well, too, but um, it'll definitely be longer than that because yeah. we are very, very bad at the time. Yeah, just like so this video was supposed to be short, but it's 17 minutes. <laughs> right. So, I think we've covered everything, but essentially, anything that we are doing, we're going to be um, filming on here, posting on here, documenting on here, yeah. and we hope that we either help inspire you, almost make you into a way. Yeah, and can I just say a quick thank you for everybody that's taken the time to message me or Dom or me and Dom because we've been getting so many nice messages recently and it's just, it, it, it makes us realise why we are doing what we're doing because I yeah. always say this as well. We're doing something out of the back of like this is just passion for us, like, we just enjoy this. Yeah. But, I like talking, but so does Dan. Through us doing this, <laughs> doing something that we enjoy, we're actually having an impact on other people and that's priceless. So if you if you're watching this as well and you're subscribed, then thank you as well for watching uh, for subscribing. And if you do like what we're putting out, then we'd love to hear from you because yeah. you might think we get inundated with messages and we do get a lot of nice messages, but it, you can never have enough. And it's good to know that we're actually making an impact. People are valuing what we're putting out there. So please like, share, and subscribe, and comment, and yeah. just give us feedback. And we want to speak to the guys that are watching these videos and whatnot. So. And if you have anything that you want to see us do or you want to, to know about then drop a comment below but thanks for watching thank you guys